Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about onboarding and juniors, so let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how long would you say the onboarding process generally takes for a fairly junior programmer that you are mentoring to reach the different stages, such as fairly independent and domain expert of something? So this was posted on a video that I made called How do you mentor a new programmer and in that video I sort of describe usually how I go through it and uh, the I suppose I suspect that I referenced like what I call like different stages of uh, like the person's development where fairly independent you know they sort of know how things work and then domain expert of something is sort of what I refer to when you have someone who is the go-to for something in the in the team who is not me or who is not like whoever might be the most experienced person within that specific team because the longer you are there of course usually you start picking up things and it's good that when new things come along it doesn't just collect in one single individual. Um, for how long it takes, it very much depends on the junior. Uh, uh, the, it can take everything from usually, I, w I won't say weeks, but uh, a, few, a couple of months usually it takes for a uh, junior software developer to become fairly independent uh, like uh, they're not most likely not going to be able to solve every problem themselves but they, they, they're usually able to produce something of, uh, of value at least after the first few weeks and after a few months it's usually enough depending on how stable the work environment is as well uh, for them to sort of get by, by the, on their own it's usually fairly slow going. I mean, I don't really expect any type of miracles in terms of productivity when I'm dealing with a junior software developer. Uh, but it's like not like they can't ship anything. It usually just takes longer and they ask for more help, etc., etc., which I would consider to be fairly independent. Like, yeah. As long as they can make progress on uh, on their own or like not get blocked completely uh, I would say that that's good enough usually and as for becoming a domain expert or something uh, the reality there is that it that could that's sort of uh, it's hard to say because the there isn't necessarily some type of organic way for a person to like, say that you're definitely going it's hard to say that someone's going to become a domain expert just like the reason why I reference it is because it does happen sooner or later but who becomes the domain expert has very much to do with a series of fairly complicated circumstances the most an organic the most organic way it happens is usually that there's a story that is like super critical a new feature or something like that and you by pure coincidence become the person who picks it up that's usually how it goes like the people who get the person who gets the story usually becomes the domain expert unless there's some type of systematic way where like a classic one is that uh, you have a uh, fairly experienced software developer in a more junior team or you have someone who stands out in some way and they systematically becomes the, they become the go-to for questions and meetings and stuff like that which uh, an example would be uh, in the teams that I've been in uh, where I've been the team lead uh, then it's very organic becomes a question of that I need to be involved in a lot of other things apart from just the coding and so I might not be like a domain expert of every single thing but I'm definitely going to be a domain expert in more and more things and the more I accumulate in terms of knowledge of the domain the more likely it is that I'm going to be the person who knows everything about it so it's not really it becomes difficult for others to organically take on that responsibility because it's simply so convenient quote-unquote for 
people to just ask me. And it's, I've seen the same thing happen. Many, I mean, it's the same thing that happened to me when I was a junior and I had like more senior coworkers who had been working for longer. Like everybody asked them and so I did as well, which caused us problems in many cases because if you don't spread the knowledge around, it's basically all down to that that person is available. Otherwise, everybody's sort of lost because no one ever takes the time to write anything down or knowledge share or anything like that, which is like as I say, that's the organic way how these sorts of things happen. But the reality of that, uh, as I said, is that it, there is no time estimate for how long a person would take for that to happen. You could work the rest of your career without ever becoming like a true domain expert of something. It's not, you know, mean, something you're going to know about. But it's very, it, it's not something that is as organic as being independent. Because independent you will be by just working. Uh, but becoming like the go to for certain functionalities and stuff like that is uh, it's really down to what are you gonna do so yeah if if it is you who implement it then you're gonna become a domain expert if it's not it's very unlikely and that doesn't have to I mean it could you could become the domain expert of a, of an, of a feature that people have a lot of vested interest in in just a matter of weeks or months or something like that uh, like in the same time it takes you to be fairly independent because as I said it really just comes down to are you the person implementing it or like you do you spend enough time with it to have answers to the questions that people have so what I want you to take away from this is that generally it takes everything from a few weeks to a few months for a so in a uh, junior software developer to become fairly independent it really comes down to personal aptitude and sort of how the work is structured it can take even like it can take a long time uh, it would be very difficult for a for a junior software developer to become autonomous uh, in an environment where you have a lot of blockers or like the complexity of the code is high or so forth and so forth so it's very I will say a few weeks to a few months a couple of months something like that uh, before they can start producing things fairly like consistently without a lot of help and as for becoming a domain expert uh, it's not the given that you're going to become a domain expert of something because it comes down to uh, usually organically it comes down to do you get those stories do you become the person who's like responsible for delivering on certain projects and so forth and do those projects actually have a like a an interest from the company because usually it comes down like domain experts I mean everybody's a domain expert you should quote unquote off their own feature because they've wrote, written the code and usually they know sort of what it's about but uh, it's a difference between just delivering some type of feature and actually knowing about a project or like an area of business logic where you sort of have to know how the implementation works you need to know like like you, you sort of had to be there in order to know how it works and as I said you can go quite a few years like uh, it's not a given that you're gonna get that knowledge it really comes down to if you were involved in that specific project and do you have like a reoccurring need to develop that thing or so forth and so forth so that you actually get to learn a part of the company's business model or like the structure of the that's a given project have a great day